Hey everybody, what's up? I Snail68 here, and welcome back to our Let's Play of Mass Effect 1 Legendary Edition. In the last episode, we arrived in the Zeus we arrived back at the Zeus Hope Colony and made sure to incapacitate all the colonists infected by the Thorian. Unfortunately, we cannot save Fidan. In this episode, we're heading deeper beneath the colony to find and destroy the Thorian. Also, before we continue on, I would recommend at this point a uh, bunch of stuff. Uh, you're not going to need the Thorian gas anymore. I wouldn't recommend getting rid of it. This is the one of one in the whole game that you can get. You can't get it anywhere else. So it's just if you want to have everything in the game, keep it. But do switch back to your normal grenades or whatever you would prefer. Anyways, let us go on. All right, we just need to find this creature and determine what it, what it, Kira. What is that? That does not look like any plant I've ever seen. This may be problematic. Invaders, your every step is a transgression. A thousand feelers appraise you as meat, good only to dig or decompose. I speak for the old growth as I did for Saren. You are within and before the Thorian. It commands that you be in awe. You gave something to Saren. Something I need. Saren sought knowledge of those who are gone. The old growth listened to flesh for the first time in the long cycle. Trades were made. Then cold ones began killing the flesh that would tend the next cycle. Flesh fairly given. The old growth sees the air you push as lies. It will listen no more. I won't let you keep your thralls. Release them, now. No more will the Thorian listen to those that scurry. Your lives are short, but have gone on too long. All right, and we meet. <laughs> All right, nice guys. Um, yeah, we immediately hop into a battle with this Asari clone, but we deal with her quickly. That said, there are also Thorian creepers around here that we'll have to deal with. There we go. Oh, there's another one over here. Trying to show stuff off, but of course, all the enemies keep coming and fighting. One more? Yeah, one more. Okay, so. Can't directly damage the Thorian itself. It's real big and real tanky, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how a plant has armor plates, but if we head over here, there's a little thing called a neural node. Can't see it because of my VTuber, but it does have a health bar. That definitely seemed to have angered it. As Liara said, let us move on and see if we can find some other nodes to destroy. Attacking certain. Oh, hold on. I'll say it after this. It creates another Asari clone that we'll probably end up running into. So as you move through here, you'll see that there's all the neural nodes to destroy. If I can take out the clone, that'd be swell. Oh, 
as you approach and attack certain nodes, it'll cause those groups of kind of sleeping creepers to wake up and try to defend it. And you'll also, of course, be dealing with the several Asari clones that it's just going to keep spawning as the fight goes on. That being said, though, this fight is a lot easier in Legendary Edition than it was in the original, as in the original, the Asari clone, she was able to directly target Shepard with her knockdown abilities. Okay, let me heal. I didn't realize I was that low on health, Jesus. Um, yeah, she has uh, knockdown abilities, just certain biotics that'll knock the player down and cause you to be unable to do anything, leading to you getting attacked by either her or the Thorians. In Legendary Edition, she does not use those against Shepard. She only uses it against your squad mates. So they definitely made it a bit easier compared to the original. Let us just keep moving forward, though. Definitely got a lot of Thorian Creepers to deal with. I should really go for the, um... Let me go for the shotgun route, because this is all in very close quarters. Is there an enemy over here? Oh, hello. Yeah, dealing with the Asari clone was so bad in original that basically every time I destroy a node, I'd go and make a new save, which... Let me heal. I'm actually going to do now. I'm just going to make a save real quick. Just so I didn't have to do like the first half of the boss fight over again. Wow, that grenade did nothing to the neural nodes. You'll notice as you kind of move through here destroying the nodes. Each node is... Uh, it takes longer to destroy than the last. It gets stronger and stronger each time trying to defend itself. Oh, hello. It's not expecting that. Pretty sure Liara just absorbed all those shots there. Yep, yeah, well, hurry up and return, then, Liara. Oh, she saved herself with a barrier there. How cute. Not that it mattered too long. Wow, this shotgun's actually putting in some work. I'll give it that. Be a lot better if I was a vanguard or a uh, soldier so I could take advantage of the shotgun's unique abilities, but oh well. A medical station here that we can hack into. Alright, got some armor for uh, Tali. I might... I'm gonna have to find light armor for me, because the armor that I have right now, it is not gonna cut it. I don't want to be wearing this for the whole game. Okay, there's a whole lot more of you in here than I thought. Liar, you wouldn't happen to have... You do have Singularity. It's the one, one reason I wish I was a Biotic. Singularity really helps with crowd control. Just getting these enemies to float around. Hello. Um... Try and target her specifically, but I don't think I can. Let me just lift you. Jeez. 
Jesus, some of those sounds are real fucking creepy. Oh, it's stuff spawning under me. I'm like, what just spawned behind me? It wasn't anything behind me. It was these... Not even these guys. Hello? Oh, it's above me. God, this is going to be annoying because... Yeah, all the ones behind us are spawning now. Or waking up. I should... Fuck off, bitch. Oh, she's already dead. I'm just shooting her body. And we are dead again. Nice. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do feel better, Liara. I was about to say, I'm missing a neural node, and then I saw the one that we haven't gotten to yet. Uh, I'm gonna pop a singularity again. Even though I don't think it did uh, what I wanted it to. Where are you? Hello. Found the Asari clone. Oh, I am shooting Liara. I'm glad I caught that, uh, I was taking damage. Or that Shepard grunted, I should say, so I was able to tell that I'm about to die. There's still a creeper fighting us. I'm free. I I suppose I should thank you for releasing me. Is everything all right? Are you hurt? I am fine, or I will be in time. My name is Shiala. I serve I served Matriarch Benezia. When she allied herself with Saren, so did I. Benezia foresaw the influence Saren would have. She joined him to guide him down a gentler path. But Saren is compelling. Benezia lost her way. Are you saying Saren can control minds? Benezia underestimated Saren, as I did. We came to believe in his cause and his goals. The strength of his influence is troubling. Benezia sought to turn the river and was swept away. Asari matriarchs are among the most intelligent and powerful beings in the galaxy. How could one fall under Saren's control? Saren has a vessel, an enormous warship unlike anything I've ever seen. He calls it Sovereign. It can dominate the minds of his followers. They become indoctrinated to Saren's will. The process is subtle. It can take days, weeks, but in the end, it is absolute. I was a willing slave when Saren brought me to this world. He needed my biotics to communicate with the Thorian to learn its secrets. Saren offered me in trade. I was sacrificed to secure an alliance between Saren and the Thorian. Saren's pretty quick to betray his own people. He was quick to betray the Thorian, too. After he had what he wanted, he ordered the Geth to destroy all evidence of his existence. Saren knows you are searching for the Conduit. He knows you are following his steps. He attacked the Thorian so you could not gain the cipher. What's the cipher? And why did Saren need it? The beacon on Eden Prime gave you visions. But the visions are unclear, confusing. They were meant for a Prothean mind. To truly comprehend them, you must think like a Prothean. He must understand their culture, their history, their very existence. The Thorian was here long before the Protheans built this city. It watched and studied them. When they died, it consumed them. They became a part of it. 
So the Thorian taught Saren to think like a Prothean. How? The cipher is the very essence of being a Prothean. It cannot be described or explained. It would be like describing color to a creature without eyes. To understand, you must have access to endemic ancestral memory. A viewpoint spanning thousands of Prothean generations. I sensed this ancestral memory, the cipher, when I melded with the Thorian. Our identities merged, our minds intertwined. Such knowledge cannot be taught, it simply exists. I need that knowledge to stop Saren. There is a way. I can transfer the knowledge from my mind to yours, as I did with Saren. Try to relax, Commander. Slow, deep breaths. Let go of your physical shell. Reach out to grasp the threads that bind us, one to another. Every action sends ripples across the galaxy. Every idea must touch another mind to live. Each emotion must mark another's spirit. We are all connected. Every living being united in a single glorious existence. Open yourself to the universe, Commander. Embrace eternity. I have given you the cipher, just as it was given to Saren. The ancestral memories of the Protheans are part of you now. What was that? Commander Shepard, are you alright? I saw... something. It still didn't make any sense. You have been given a great gift. The experience of an entire people. It will take time for your mind to process this information. We should get you back to the ship where you can be monitored. I am sorry if you have suffered, but there was no other way. You needed the cipher. In time, it will help you understand the vision from the beacon. Oh my god. Alright, we're getting some lore dump here. Is there anything else you can tell me about the Thorian? When the creature enveloped me, I became part of it. But I still don't truly understand it. So alien, so ancient. Its exact age is impossible to know. It measured time differently. 10,000 years of hibernation broken by a few frantic centuries of activity. Its mind was awesome, magnificent. It transcended all classification. And now it is gone. Don't tell me you feel sorry for that thing. The Thorin was a unique life form. A sentient being that lived for 50,000 years, maybe more. There is nothing even remotely like it in the known galaxy. I am grateful you saved me from a life of thraldom. Yet I cannot help but feel some sorrow for the loss of such a rare and remarkable creature. Why is the Thorian down there now? Okay. Tell me more about this ship Saren has. Sovereign is alien. I do not know how it was built or where it comes from. Its design does not match that of any known spacefaring species. It dwarfs any vessel in the Citadel or Alliance fleets. Its weapons are devastating, its defenses virtually impenetrable. With it, Saren believes he is unstoppable. You said Saren uses it to manipulate his followers. The indoctrination. There is an energy about Sovereign. You feel drawn to the ship. It makes Saren's arguments more persuasive, more compelling. Spend enough time in Sovereign's presence and you will lose yourself. There is no other way to explain it. I want to know more about Benezia. Benezia was greatly respected among our people. A powerful biotic, even for an Asari. 
She was widely known as a teacher of philosophy and religion. She always sought the paths of peace and harmony. She joined with Saren because she hoped to turn him away from his path of destruction. Instead, she became one of his most powerful allies. As I mentioned before, Matriarch Benezia underestimated Saren. Be sure you do not make the same mistake. What else can you tell me about Saren? There is little I could tell you that you do not already know. He's powerful, he's charismatic, and he is dangerous. Once I followed him, blind to his true nature, but now I see he's leading the galaxy into an age of darkness and suffering. I want to know more about you. There is nothing remarkable about me. I was merely one of Matriarch Benezia's disciples. For nearly two centuries, I followed her, learning at her feet. When Benezia revealed her plan to join Saren, she gave her disciples a choice. Only those who were willing had to follow her. Many felt her plan was too dangerous, but I believed in her. I thought she could turn Saren away from his insanity. Instead, we joined him in it. Now that you're free of the Thorian, what are you planning to do next? If you allow it, I would like to stay here with the colonists. They have suffered greatly, and I played a role in their suffering. I would like to make amends. The colonists will need all the help they can get. They'll be happy to have you on their side. Thank you, Commander. May fortune smile upon you. You did it. With the Thorian gone, we can start rebuilding for ourselves again. And we're free of Exogeny's threats. We're back to being just a little nowhere colony. Thank you, Commander. Huh. <laughs> was surprised that I kind of jumped through that. Okay, so first off, we got a bunch of skill points. Let's top off decryption. That's nice. Um, <sighs> remind me what this gets us. I don't really sell stuff, but. How am I? Yeah, I'm gonna at least do that just to set my intimidate a bit higher, even though it doesn't need to be necessarily. It'll be tough going, but we'll make this a home. You saved most of the infected. It'll take time to recover from the physical effects, but they'll be all right. Most of I saved all of them. The fuck you on about? I don't think anyone here has anything interesting to say. Um, I do want to talk to Ledra, see if he has any armor. I never thought I would be so thrilled to see a soldier. Forgive my previous inaction, but under the Thorian's influence, every thought was examined and filtered. What will you do now that the fighting is over? I may stay, try to recover my losses. I can have new supplies delivered within weeks. Perhaps the colony will survive after all. Let me see what you have in stock. Of course. Return in the future, and I may even have more to see. Okay, no, he doesn't have any armor for us, unfortunately. Oh well. Uh, I'd say with that, I'm going to do one last lap around the colony, see if anyone has anything interesting to say. But, besides that, actually, let me just do it now. Fuck it. Instead of ending the episode. Oh, hello. That's why you should look around a bit. With the power cells you brought, I can get this place up and running again. Thanks, Commander. Yeah, I don't think there's anything all too interesting, unfortunately. Thank you for everything you did. Thanks, Commander. It's great to be free again. Oh, hello. There's a terminal in here. I missed this. Uh, while decrypting these logs, he found something suspicious. Several months' worth of human rations were delivered to an uncharted world in the Voyager Cluster. The logs aren't clear, but it appears they maybe have dropped off somewhere in the Amazon system. Interesting. That'll be good to know for later, I guess. And what about... Okay, it's over here. You two. 
Oh, Ian's in here. I did a lot here, the fuck you mean tried? Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, that seems to be everyone. Alright, so with that, I will see you guys in the next episode. Humanity's first The Systems Alliance is an independent supranational government representing the interests of humanity as a whole. The Alliance is responsible for the governance and defense of all extrasolar colonies and stations. The Alliance grew out of the various national space programs as a matter of practicality. Sol's planets had been explored and exploited through piecemeal national efforts. The expense of colonizing entire new solar systems could not be met by any one country. With humans knowing that alien contact was inevitable, there was enough political will to jointly fund an international effort. Still, the Alliance was often disregarded by those on Earth until the first contact war. While the national governments dithered and bickered over who should lead the effort to liberate Shanxi, the Alliance fleet struck decisively. Post-war public approval gave the Alliance the credibility to establish its own parliament and become the galactic face of humanity. <laughs>